when I decided to bring the stories back, I thought I was do it a little differently. I know there's some of you who are waiting on the storage auction stories. They're coming, they're coming, but there's some new stuff. Some things that I've done that I've never really talked about. And I have been dying, <laughs> dying to bring this story to you. The title of the story is Easily Does It. This is something that happened when I was doing my research for the book about Uber. Let me paint the scene for you. In my former neighborhood, there was this place called the Ivy. It was on the south side of the Buckhead, South Buckhead. And when I would do Uber on a Saturday night, I would literally pick up and drop off 15 to 20 times from that one spot. It was really, really jumping. So one night, I am getting this call, and then, you know, I had the SUV at the time with the third row. And it gets this, you know, Uber XL. I said, okay. And it looked like they were going pretty far. So I go look for them, and there's a little confusion because the Ivy shares a parking lot with a Waffle House and a car wash, and it's really, 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 really busy. And the police are out there, and it's just like you drop people off, you pick them up, and you, you have to be quick about your business. So I'm over there, and I'm looking for them, and then I get a text from one the person that requested the Uber that they were at the Waffle House. I said, okay, this will make it easy. So I go over to the Waffle House, and I drive up, then I see these two couples. And let me tell you about the first thing that I saw. She was about 5'3", without the heels, with the heels, she was about 5'8". And if you've ever watched any of these videos, in the long, if you've been there a long time, you know I'm a leg man. And she had great legs, awesome legs. I said, oh, this is going to, I'm going to get paid, and I'm going to get a little eye candy. So she comes over, and then there's the other couple, the female part of the other couple, she's, she's gone. She is slickered. She is fucked up just totally fucked up she's like are you the uber man i like your vehicle it's he's kind of cute honey and i was like okay this is how it started if you've ever driven for uber and a lot of guys don't talk about it women will flirt with you outrageously there is something about a guy serving them and i was just like okay she's drunk i didn't really pay any attention to that then her husband he looks at her and he's somewhat drunk too so he just pretty much did the drunk like well i guess it is a nice vehicle and you know he is a good looking man right this is how this shit starts so they get in the back then another guy he gets in the back and then legs gets up front with me okay she has no underwear on i can tell by the dress i'm just like okay this just keeps getting better and better you know she gets up there they get in the back we're all talking I had XM radio, so I would always put like classical music because classical music was so, uh, it, just everyone liked classical music. There was no way that you can offend someone and there wasn't no lyrics. There was, you know, it was just middle of the road and it worked really well and I got a lot of compliments on that. So I had the classical station on and then Legs is like, would you turn that up? That is just, that's really nice. I don't think I've heard that before. And she's talking to her husband back there. And he's like, yes, that's really nice. Then Slicker, well, you know, we get drunk and then we get sophisticated. It's just like I am cracking up because they're drunk. It doesn't matter. I plug in the coordinates and they really, they don't live far. But since it's two drop offs and we have to go through over by Chastain and then over by, not, you know, not Howell Mill, but kind of Howell Mill area, back end of Wesley Ch of West Paces Ferry. So we're heading over there, right? And there's Leg. She's up there and she's talking to me. She's so drunk. Every time she mouths words, I smell the alcohol. But she holds her liquor better than the rest of them in the back. So it's just a normal saturday night drunk people banter they're talking about their stuff talking about the vehicle because they had the, the huge moon roof and then the little drunk blonde in the back was like she's like oh my god you can see the stars and honey look up and they both went "Ooh, right you know everything's funny when you're high and you're drunk right so they're doing that stuff i'm just chuckling 
So we start going through, then we get over past Chastain. I hit Northside Drive, and then we go to one of these neighborhoods that's really old and really established, and we drop them off, and they had just bought a house, and they talk about the house and everything, and, hey, it was really good hanging out with you, and the blonde stumbles, and the husband, he is more sober now. He catches her before she busts her ass on the asphalt. I mean, it would have been ugly, and she's like, you're really good for more than fucking me, right? And I was just like, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he did not say that. And then I think that they're gone, right? And then she's like, oh, we got to get some condoms because I want you to do me. And, you know, the guy's like beet red and everything. And then she comes back. Hey, would you take us to the drugstore? Because we got to get some condoms. <laughs> I was like, well. And then the the easily the, the people in there and Lex was like, yeah, get in, get in, sure, you know, this it's a Saturday night. The Uber guy doesn't mind, and she rubs my thigh and stuff. And I thought that was like highly inappropriate. So we go to the Walmart, which wasn't that far away, and they go in, and they're like gone for like twenty minutes, and they come back out with groceries, chips, and other stuff. And condoms, because she shows me, she says, see, we got the condoms, and she pulls out these magnums, right, and she winks at me, she said, I got lucky, <laughs> this is going on, I was like, okay, hey, you know, if you like it like that, it's awesome, we'll go back, drop them off, they stumble back into the house, and before we get there, this guy in the back, who's the husband of Legs, starts this story. And we were just sitting there, and he was just talking about, because they both went to Georgia, and they were just talking about college days and things, and how, you know, with responsibility and jobs and life changes. And then he, this guy says this stuff, and it's like, they start talking about this guy named Easley. And he's just like, yeah, Easley fucked everybody. He fucked, you know, he fucked her before I did. And I'm just sitting there like, did this guy just tell me one of his friends fucked his wife before they got married? Then Legs says this, oh, you're going to tell that story again? I was like, oh, this is kind of extracurricular here. I'm all ears, right? I've got to hear this. So they, he's like, yeah, you don't mind. She said, go ahead. And I'm sitting there like, oh, this is going to be juicy. And a little drunk woman back there with, with the Magnum condoms and her husband, they're, they're quiet because they're listening. And the guy's like, I don't think we've heard this story before. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say the fraternity because you would know it. But it's like, yeah, he was my frat brother. And I saw him with legs and they were making out of the party and then later on i walked by this bedroom and he had like her knees on her on her ch chest and he was drilling her out and i'm just sitting there like this guy's talking about his friend drilling out his wife who at the time wasn't his wife she was just a random chick so i'm still trying to put it all together because I, you know, I'm in my Uber mode, right? I'm a driver. I'm the chauffeur. I drive. I don't say anything. I just listen and collect money. That's my role. Then they go on and it's like, yeah, Easley hit it first. And as the story went on, it was just like, is he proud that Easley fucked his wife first? Because there was a sense of pride that Easley hit it first. And I was just like, okay, this, this is going to the book. This is going to the book. This has got to go in the book. So, we're, we're going along and along and we're just talking and then she goes on and well you know he was pretty well endowed this is the conversation at about 2 30 on a saturday night the guy in the back's the husband they're talking about easily and then he's like well easily fucked everyone i mean easily was the man i was just sitting like who the fuck you know, i didn't mean to sit i was just like who the fuck is this easily then they tell me well you know he comes from old money and he's just used to getting his way and I was like, okay. You know, I didn't really want to get too deep into it, but I got sucked into the story because then they started talking. And it was just like, well, you know, it's college. You experiment. And little blonde chicks back there, you know, because this we, we dropped them off just after this part. And a little blonde chicks was like, well, I've always wondered what it's like to fuck a black man. And it got real damn quiet. And I was just like, Said nothing, 
because it was like this could be really really interesting or this could be really really bad then i was like well you know well you're married now and i guess you'll never find out and then the husband was like well you know she wants to experiment <laughs> I'm sitting there like, what is this? The audition for Mandingo? Because at, at one point, I was just like, they're drunk, right? But they had sobered up a little bit. We talked about condoms. There was all this sex talk, all this stuff about this dude fucking his wife. And then this little blonde's back there, and she's just kind of by, and then they get out. Then I take legs and her husband home and the conversation begins about all of the parties and stuff and how they participated in the orgy and everything and i swear i was thinking are they auditioning me for something is this like a cuck hole deal is or because you know well maybe you don't know because you haven't had my life but you know buying storage units and reading personal journals and stuff there's kind of this fetish where some white couples like to bring a little black dick in the mix. I mean, I don't know, but it was feeling kind of like an audition because legs kept touching me, and it seemed that husband, the husband, got off on other people fucking his wife because they kept talking about it. They talked about the swinging and everything, and it was just like, yeah, we've never really had any black cock up in the mix i mean that's just the general consensus of the conversation and i'm just sitting there like what is going on so we continue to talk and everything and i'm this mostly listening and driving and wondering where the hell is this going so we get to their place which is her mother's place which is in a really nice i know that street because i have a friend that live on that street and, you know, they stay in the vehicle and everything, and they talk, and it was like, well, it's really nice meeting you, and I'm really thinking about getting this vehicle. So we spent, like, 10 minutes in the driveway talking about the X5. They're looking at stuff, and I'm just sitting there like, if I say the word, I think this would go down. But that's just not my flow. It's just not my flow. I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God, you know, I just can't be stunt cock, you know? We're like, yeah, fuck her this way. You know, like those guys in their porn movies? Yeah, fuck her this way and fuck her. I just kind of had a feeling that's what the husband was about. I think that was his thing. And if I, you know, and I swear, because I wasn't trying to look too hard, but I think he had an erection because of the conversation was have. And like I said, she kept touching me. She had no panties on. The dress kept going up higher and higher. And I was like, is this a setup? What is this? So eventually, you know, we part ways and, you know, Legs gives me this big ass tip of fifty dollars. And I'm sitting there like, okay. And her business card. Yep. That's what went down. Any of you Uber drivers out there, you know, if you've had some experiences, and like I said, I didn't do anything. It just seemed kind of crazy. But that whole thing about easily does it. They were going on and on. The condoms. She got magnums. Uh, never fucked the black guy. I was just sitting there like, just looking. If I didn't know better, I would think that someone had put mics and cameras in my vehicles. Because it was that bizarre. It was just really, really that bizarre. But that's one of the stories that went down when I was doing the research for Uber. I'll never forget it. And I've kind of, you know. It just makes me think because they were drinking, but the way the current, I mean, I don't drink and I've never been drunk. So I don't know just how far the conversation goes when you get drunk. Like, are they going to wake up in the next did, did they wake up the next day and completely forgot about it? Or did they like go and fuck like bunnies on crack? Because it was like, hey, that was an exciting conversation. And you're touching the black guy and he had classical music on and. I don't know, but it was fucking interesting. It was fucking interesting. And after I dropped them off, I picked up another story. But that's it for now. Hopefully you got your hustle story fixed and uh, there'll be more coming next week. All right. This is Glendon and I will see you in the next session. If you have not gotten your free ebooks, do so. Get your free storage auction book and get your free book, 10 Essential Steps to Hustling. And I'll see you in the next session.